So just a warning up front with today's video. Today's video will have some political elements to it. Also, it will have some adult themed elements to it as well. This is a video I, I have to make because it does concern free and open source software, and it's too important of a story not to cover because free and open source software as we know it is under threat. So in the last few years, we've had this disturbing trend of these political ideologues that try to wiggle their way into positions of power within certain free and open source software projects and organizations. And once these political ideologues, they're, they're really social activists. They have this social activist, social justice kind of agenda, and they want to basically get into some of these free software, open source software organizations. They want to take hold of these organizations and turn those organizations into political activist organizations rather than organizations that promote the ideals of free and open source software. And specifically, when it comes to the free software movement, free software is all about freedom, right? Free software really stands for freedom software. You have the freedom to do whatever the hell you want to do with that software. Anybody can use that software for whatever purpose they want. Ultimate freedom, right? And there is a certain group of people out there that hate that freedom aspect that comes with free software and to a large degree open source software as well. Now this is a very small group of individuals that are out there trying to destroy all of these free and open source projects and organizations. It's a very small group of individuals because honestly most people in the free and open source software community, we're here because we love free and open source software. We love freedom. We love all the freedoms that we gain by using free software. I would say 99.9% .9 of the people watching this video right now are here because they love free and open source software. That's why they use operating systems like Linux or the BSD operating systems. That's why you use all the fantastic free and open source software, like your free and open source browsers like Firefox and Brave and things like that. Maybe you use LibreOffice and VLC and GIMP. You know, we have so much fantastic free and open source software out there. And we know none of that software would exist without free software and the free software foundation and the gpl as far as a license we all understand that the linux kernel the most important piece of software on the planet maybe in the history of the world the linux kernel that's how important that piece of software is the only reason the linux kernel took off and has so many active contributors is because of the free software movement and the gpl license which the Linux kernel is licensed under the GPL v2. And all of us that actually use the Linux operating system, our GNU slash Linux operating systems, we understand that without free software, without the GPL licensing, none of us would be here. And you know, free software changed my life, right? I, I, free software is one of the most important things in my life. It may be one of the most important things in your life. And I think it's important if you think like me that free software is something worth defending, we need to stand up when we see people actively trying to destroy it. And that's what's going on right now. Let me switch over to my browser. So a couple of days ago, this website popped up, the Stallman Report. And for those of you that have a Mastodon account, all of a sudden you've had the Stallman Report as far as an account name on Mastodon. They started uh, spamming this message all over various Mastodon instances that they're the anonymous editors of the Stallman Report website, and they've published their investigation of Richard Stallman and the Free Software Foundation today to a general audience. And they say that their report exhaustively catalogs, analyzes, and offers a rebuttal of Richard Stallman's political program of sexual violence, catalogs credible allegations of misconduct, and documents the misconduct, yada, yada, yada. So this is very strange because there is absolutely nothing new in this website. This website, by the way, this report, this investigative report is huge. If I just scroll down, the very lengthy, detailed report. But here's the problem. There is absolutely nothing in here that uh, is like new information that we all didn't know at least a decade in the past. And in some cases, some of what they're talking about goes back to the 1980s, 1990s, right? The year is 2024. Why are we writing a report about things Richard Stallman said 
30, 40 years ago. Because that's really what this report is. Um, well, let me go ahead and just tell you what this report is supposedly going to do. It's going to catalog all of uh, Stallman's, I guess, misconducts. And the primary thing that he's uh, being accused of here is just having bad ideas. So uh, on Richard Stallman's website, Richard Stallman has his own personal website. It's been up for decades. It's stallman.org. And on that, he has all kinds of weird takes on various uh, political things. In the past, he has mentioned that he's not a big fan of statutory rape laws, for example, because it's kind of arbitrary where you pick a, a certain age where a minor is no longer a minor and can you know choose to be sexually active on their own or not. You know, which I, I can understand the take, but you know, here they're saying that. What Richard Stallman has done is the normalization of sexual relations between adults and minors. That's not exactly uh, the, the point Richard is trying to make in his comments. They also say that Richard uh, is in defense of individuals both accused and convicted of sexual crimes, including the rape of minors, sexual assault, and sexual harassment. Now, Richard Stallman, several years back, did uh, make a comment that he wasn't sure that Marvin Minsky is guilty of the crimes he was accused of. Marvin Minsky was accused of uh, a sexual assault or you know some kind of sexual crimes. Uh, the guy ended up uh, dying, so I don't think he ever went to trial. But Marvin Minsky was a professor, I believe, at MIT, where Richard Stallman is also a professor at MIT. So Richard Stallman was defending someone he knew, like a personal friend, right? It wasn't wasn't like he's just defending these crimes in general. You know, he knew the guy and he said, you know, I'm not sure that guy actually did what he was accused of. That's that's all that was. And then they claim that Richard uh, has a dismissal of legal norms regarding sexual assault as well as sexual harassment, that he supports the possession of child sexual abuse material. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, and then and that he uh, supports the legal and social normalization of sex between humans and animals, bestiality, and sex between uh, humans living and the dead, necrophilia. Uh, and these are quotes on his website. You can actually go read this. Richard has stated before that he doesn't necessarily think, for example, that necrophilia should be a crime because it's not hurting anybody, right? The, the dead body is a dead body, right? And he mentioned well, the way he put it, <laughs> I think if I go find the exact quote, I did a video about this years ago on some of the crazy quotes Stallman has made. But his thing was, hey, after I'm dead, you can do whatever you want to do with my body because I'm not using it anymore. So if you guys want to have sex with my corpse, go ahead. You know, it's really dumb kind of things to say and kind of, you know, off the wall and definitely not necessarily something normal. And these are not societal norms. Anything he says, he has some really outrageous kind of takes on things. Now, you need to know a little bit about Richard Stallman's uh, political points of view. Richard Stallman is very leftist, liberal, progressive. Like if you're on a scale of uh, zero to 10 with 10 being like the most left-wing person you ever met. Richard Stallman's like a 14, right? So he has some really crazy takes, uh, especially on social issues. Now, I'm not going to spend much time addressing any of these. You can actually go to Stallman's own website. Again, just go to uh, stallman.org if you want to go look up the specific quotes for any of this stuff. By the way, they do link to a lot of this stuff. So you can go to the website and see the direct quotes yourself. But again, none None of this is new. These are statements that have been out there in some cases for decades. We've known about this for decades, and this is not private information. Richard publicly states all this on his website. It's here for the whole world to see, and it has been here for the whole world to see. Uh, again, in many cases, for at least a decade or more, in some cases, multiple decades, you know, these quotes of his have been on his website. So why? bring this up right now as a way to smear the guy. He's, you know, an elderly man. Um, right now he is struggling through a, a cancer diagnosis, although I think his health is, is doing okay these days. But again, he's a sick elderly man. Uh, he's not going to be around much longer anyway. And I'm not trying to be morbid, but I mean, at his age, I mean, how long is the guy going to be around and be a real active contributor and a voice in the free software movement? Probably not much longer. It's just strange that all of a sudden 
like today, you know, like you, this is what you want to focus on is all of these past quotes of his, again, that have always been public information. Everyone within the free and open source software community is aware of every single one of these quotes that they're, they're mentioning here. And then number two here in the bullet points, credible allegations of sexual misconduct regarding Stalbin. Now that is, that's a pretty serious allegation, sexual misconduct. When you think of sexual misconduct, what do you think about? Well, you probably think of sexual assault. Most of the time you're thinking about rape. You're thinking something seriously criminal in nature. Maybe sexual harassment, which could have some civil penalties to it. But that's not what they're talking about here. What's crazy is they call this sexual misconduct. But what they're uh, talking about is Stallman sometimes is a little weird around women. Uh, for example, he sometimes carries these business cards around with him. It's just like a standard business card. He calls it a pleasure card. <laughs> On the card, it says pleasure card, and it says what he enjoys. Like, you know, he enjoys uh, hugs and kisses from women, long walks on the beach and things like that, and, you know, enjoying music. You now, but he uses these pleasure cards. He'll hand them sometimes to women as a, a come on, you know, women that he is attracted to. And maybe instead of asking them out on a date like a normal human being, <laughs> he's kind of autistic, right? So he gives them a pleasure card. Is that sexual misconduct? No. So this allegation of sexual misconduct is there's been several women that he's given these cards to that obviously did not think highly of Stallman, you know, like, like they were never going to actually be romantically attracted to him. You know, they, they didn't want to go out on a date with him, so they just shunned him, which is normal. I mean, as a guy, you know, typically, you know, you'll ask females out on dates. Not all of them say yes. And that's the case. That's definitely the case with Stallman, as you can probably imagine. Is that sexual misconduct? is actually being attracted to a woman and respectfully, you know, kind of asking them out. It's nothing weird. Like, there's nothing he said. He didn't touch these women. Like, he didn't do anything crazy with these women. And that, that's not sexual misconduct. It's like this document, the Stallman Report, is so disingenuous, right? And, and I'm... You guys know I have criticized Richard Stallman many times over the years. I've got videos on this channel where I criticize Richard Stallman in a big way on some of what they're talking about here. I've, I've actually made videos critiquing Stallman for a lot of the things he says. I've mentioned before, I don't like when Stallman speaks publicly because he's not a good speaker. He's not a good representation of free software or the, the free software community. I mean, I, I think the guy has done incredible work. But as far as being the, the man up front that's speaking for the community, Stallman is pretty bad in that role. So I have real complaints on some things with Richard Stallman, but I would never just outright make shit up. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead. Like this sexual misconduct thing, man, that's so over the top. Uh, and, and then we get this content warning, warning that this page is going to contain some offensive things and kind of like the warning I gave you guys at the beginning of this video, you know, hey, there's going to be some adult material here. Maybe not everybody should read it. But then part of the content warning here is if you or someone you know has been a victim of sexual violence, contact this online. <laughs> like there's no sexual violence anywhere in this document and you're not accusing him of sexual violence. Why are you putting this here? This is obviously to try try to influence you in some way, because most people are not going to really read this document, then you're just going to see sexual misconduct. You think, wow, sexual assault. Richard Stallman assaulted somebody. Oh, wow. Sexual violence. Call this hotline. Wow. What did Stallman do? Did he really assault someone? Maybe he assaulted a child. I mean, your mind goes into the worst possible places. None of that is true. And whoever uh, documented this, whoever put this website together, I mean, this is a really well done hit piece, but it is done in a totally disingenuous sort of way and a dishonest way because whoever made this website, I, there's, we know why they're doing it. They're not doing it because anything Richard Stallman has done deserves this kind of treatment. I mean, Richard's a weird guy, but again, all of this stuff has been in the public's eye for 30, 40 years. Nothing new here. And I can also tell you they're not attacking Richard Stallman for political reasons as far as Richard Stallman being a different political party than them. Because I promise you, the person that put this website together is a left-leaning person, a far left-leaning person, just like Richard Stallman. So why would somebody or a group of somebodies with very similar political leanings 
attack somebody like Richard Stallman. Well, it's not just for politics sake. They need Stallman to go because they want to take a hold of the organizations that Stallman currently runs. Now, if I scroll to the very bottom of this report, eventually we get to the reason why this Stallman report website exists. And it's pretty obvious, even before you get to the bottom of the page, obviously, it's not necessarily they want to damage Richard Stallman. They just want Richard Stallman to go away. They want to take hold of the Free Software Foundation and the GNU Project. And here you go. Recommendations to the FSF leadership, the Free Software Foundation leadership. Basically what they want, they want Richard Stallman to step down. They don't want him to be a member of the board of directors and they do not want him to have any voting rights. They want him to have zero power in the Free Software Foundation. This is very important because Richard Stallman founded the Free Software Movement and the Free Software Foundation. And if a individual or a group of individuals wants to take control of the Free Software Foundation and take it in a totally different direction, they have to have Richard Stallman gone because Richard Stallman is like a complete free software ideologue. He will never, ever budge on the free software definition, the four freedoms, the whole idea of having ultimate freedom when it comes to software and ultimate freedom as far as your digital lives. Richard Stallman will never budge an inch. So what you have to do if you really want to change the free software definition and there's free software in general, you have to get rid of Richard Stallman. And that's really what the whole point of this website was. I just wish they would have been honest up front with us instead of, you know, trying to create this document, this weird document that somehow insinuates Richard Stallman as some kind of sexual predator, which he absolutely is not. But here's the thing. If this group of individuals, they need more than just one seat on a board of directors to really change things, you can't just get rid of Richard Stallman. So you know what they recommend? They recommend the following four people that are on the board of directors. You guys also need to go along with Richard, right? You guys have to go. And the reason you have to go, uh, I don't know. They don't really like they basically say you have to go because maybe you enabled Richard in some way because I guess you're a part of the free software founder. It's very weird. I don't know why these four individuals are responsible for anything Richard Stallman has ever said or any action Richard Stallman has ever taken. Even if Richard did do some things that might have been reprehensible and deserve Richard being removed from the free software foundation. What the hell does that have to do with any of these people? Well, all of these people, they're part of the Free Software Foundation Board of Directors, and they probably, like Richard, believe in free software completely and the four freedoms completely. They would never want to see a change in the free software definition. So you know what? We're going to lump you in with Richard, even though you have nothing to do at all with anything that's been said on this uh, web page as far as the Stallman report. We're just going to go ahead and demand right now. You guys go to, basically, there's probably like half a dozen people that's part of this group behind the Stallman report, they want those seats. So they need a certain number of people gone from the Free Software Foundation Board of Directors so they can all take the seats and then take control of the Free Software Foundation and then lead it in a totally different direction. Now, the Free Software Foundation is very heavily linked with the GNU Project, which Richard also found, right? Richard founded the Free Software Foundation and the GNU Project. Richard still leads the... GNU project, right? And the GNU project is very important because all of the GNU software, anything that's GNU software, they sign over the rights to their software to the GNU project. So who controls all of that software? Who controls all the licensing behind that software? Well, it's the guy that leads the GNU project, Richard Stallman, right? He's the one that basically controls the licensing for everything. You know, he demands everything to be GPL software, right? And if, again, if you're wanting to change free software, you really want to change the GPL or you want to get rid of the GPL. You want to substitute other things for the GPL. So you, you don't just need to take control of the Free Software Foundation. You need to take control of the GNU project as well. And they demand that Richard Stallman be removed from the GNU project as well. It's pretty obvious, right? It doesn't take very much brain power to realize the motivations behind this entire report. And if you've been paying attention for the last few years, you can come up with this small group of individuals that almost certainly 
are behind the Stallman report because it, we, we've seen all of this before. First of all, let's talk about the actual individuals behind StallmanReport.org. Now, I did notice that over on Reddit, on r slash open source, when the story first broke, you know, and somebody posted this thread about it, somewhere in the comments, someone did a securitytrails.com. So securitytrails.com is like an IP uh, address uh, uh, lookup for websites. And even though there is some anonymization with this site, with the stallmanreport.org, they tried to hide their identities, but they didn't do a great job because I guess at one point, the IP IP address for stallmanreport.org was also the same IP address for Drew DeVault's personal website. Drew DeVault, I don't really know this guy. I, I've never read any of his writings, but apparently he is the founder and CEO of Source Hut. But he has a blog, it's quite political, quite socially activist kind of in nature, and he is very critical of Richard Stallman. So if this is true, and I'm not, I, I didn't do the IP check myself, you know, I, I don't have a I, I don't have an account with this particular site. I didn't do the lookup myself, but if it is true, it would make sense that somebody that in the past has had some serious uh, critiques of Richard Stallman, it would make sense why he might be associated uh, with the StallmanReport.org website. I will say it's also interesting that the Stallman Report website, if you go and look at the uh, source code for the site itself, it's written in Hugo, and Drew DeVault's personal website is also a Hugo site. Now, there's millions of Hugo sites out there, but it just uh, again, there is some parallel there. So maybe, maybe he has something to do with the site. Maybe he doesn't. Again, I'm not 100% I'm positive on that, but it's definitely a group of individuals. It's not just one person, it, it, even if it is Drew, if Drew's a part of it, he's not the only one because uh, the Stallman report uh, on the uh, Mastodon, they do mention that they have multiple people because in one of their replies, uh, they mentioned uh, something about them having at least two non-binary individuals. Uh, so, you know, they've got at least two members of the LGBTQ community that's supposedly part of the Stallman report. Again, if you can take that at face value and immediately just because of this takeover nature where they want to take over organizations, in this case, Free Software Foundation and the GNU Project. I have a certain organization in mind. I have a suspect. I'm not saying for sure that these are the people, but the Ethical Source Movement. Ethical Source is a uh, basically an organization that they want to redefine what is free software and what is open source software. They want everything to be ethical source. Now, what does ethical source mean? Well, you would think it is something nice. They want ethical software, ethical. By ethical, they want software written by people and used by people that support their particular worldview, political beliefs, religious beliefs. They want a world where instead of having ultimate freedom to do whatever you want to do with the software, anybody can use it for whatever purpose, ethical source, they want to strictly define who can use your software and what purposes they can use it for. It's essentially proprietary software at that point, right? But this group, their goal is to change free and open source software into ethical source software, right? Again, proprietary software. And typically what they wanna do when they talk about ethical software, they don't want people that don't share their political views using their software. So they don't want, in this case, they don't want right wing kind of people using their software. Again, this is very left wing, liberal, progressive people, the people behind ethical source software. So that is their goal. They want to have a, they, they want to divide software. <laughs> they want two groups of software. They want software for their group of people, you know, everybody that agrees with their political views and everybody else, you can't use our software, right? <laughs> That's what they want. And obviously if you're a fan of free and open source software and the free software movement, the open source movement, this is one of the absolute worst things you could possibly do to software is this ethical source thing. Now, the people behind this, the organization for ethical source, they're the same people behind the contributor covenant um, code of conduct, which is a very kind of uh, left leaning code of conduct that many organizations adopted. It was very popular, especially just a couple of years ago. A lot of uh, companies and organizations were adopting this. It's all about everybody's equal, you know, it's DEI, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and it's just a really 
It's really quite prejudicial and bigoted, this particular code of conduct. It's not something that I would recommend any software project actually adopt. And who are these people? Well, let's go to who are these people? Well, there's Coraline Ada Imke. She's the one that wrote the uh, contributor covenant license. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, this person here, Sean Bailey, I noticed the pronouns. They do include pronouns, uh, they, them. So that might be a, a non-binary person, right? So that that might, you know, who knows? I, I don't know. But there's definitely some, you know, LGBTQ uh, people here, at least two. I, I don't know about the rest of them. But uh, again, the Stallman Report, we know there were at least two members of the LGBTQ community that supposedly are part of that. And we also know that this ethical source crowd, they tried to infiltrate the uh, open source initiative at one point. Uh, they were trying to get seats on their board of directors so they could redefine what open source software was. And by redefine it, they wanted ethical source software. They wanted to be able to pick and choose which groups of people could actually use open source software and which could not. Now, thankfully, I don't think that in the end that didn't go anywhere. Oh, I, 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 this also reminds me of this situation uh, from about uh, a year ago where the Software Freedom Conservancy in conjunction with the Free Software Foundation Europe, which is not the Free Software Foundation, the real one, Free Software Foundation Europe, some other kind of crazy group. But these organizations got together and they removed uh, this person, Eben uh, Moglen, who was actually a lawyer that worked at the Software Freedom Law Center. And it's actually interesting because that's some of the same people that would agree with the ethical source thing and maybe would also agree with the Stallman report because some of those people in these organizations do not like Richard Stallman and they would very much like to take control of the real Free Software Foundation, not the Free Software Foundation Europe. They were also the ones behind getting rid of this particular lawyer for the Software Freedom Law Center because they said he was a, a bully, you know, whatever. But it's interesting because this guy being a lawyer for the Software Freedom Law Center. What was his job? Well, his job was largely defending free software in legal cases, uh, especially regarding GPL violations. That's interesting that you would go after somebody that's defending the GPL. You would think then that the people behind that don't like the GPL, and maybe they just don't like free software in general. So again, you got a lot of clues as to some of the folks that possibly are behind the Stallman report. Again, I have no 100% concrete proof that any of these people are behind it. But again, where there's smoke, there's usually fire. Now to wrap all this up, to kind of wrap it up and put a bow on it, I do want to have some real talk here, guys, because you know politics has nothing to do with free and open source software, or at least it shouldn't. One of the great things, one of the things I absolutely admire about Richard Stallman. Richard Stallman is a very far left person. And I, I would just say, you know, I don't necessarily agree on everything with Richard Stallman from a political standpoint, but that's okay because that has nothing to do with free software. Richard Stallman has run the GNU project and he founded the Free Software Foundation, has been a part of that forever for, for going on 40 years. And you know what Richard Stallman has never done? He has never tried to divide people politically. One of the foundations of free software and the GNU project is that anybody from any political persuasion can be a part of that project, everyone is welcome. And part of that comes with Richard Stallman being as old as he is, you know, he is from a different time, right? He grew up in a different era where it was normal for people of different political parties to actually just get along, talk to each other and be a part of the same organizations. Obviously in today's world, especially through the toxicity of social media, a lot of young people see that as strange, but that was actually normal. Normal folks, we, we just get along, right? But yeah, that's part of why Richard Stallman needs to go is because of some of these really social activist mindset kind of people. They need people like Richard Stallman, reasonable people. They need them out of the way. And I can't stress this enough. If your life has actually been changed by anything, and let's talk about political things that have changed your life. I, I, I'm not a big fan of politics, but you guys that are really hardcore into politics, you really identify with your political party, whether it be you identify as a Democrat or you identify as a Republican. You know, think about your entire life. What has that political party 
or just the political machine in general. What has that ever done for you? How has that ever made a significant difference in your life? Are, are you better for having been a Democrat or having been a Republican? I mean, really think about that. And I'm being dead honest. Think about that. And now I want you to think about this question. How has your life changed because of free and open source software? Drastically, right? You can think of a million things that free and open source software improved your life in. Real tangible benefits. I can tell you right now, free software and open source software have changed my life. They have changed everything about my workflow as far as computers. They've changed the way I think about privacy, security. They have completely changed my worldview in general. Right, I owe so much to free and open source software. So don't think of this as being a part of a political team. We are not part of a political team here. You, me, doesn't matter what political agendas we may or may not have, we all must stand up and defend free and open source software. As such, my call to action on this video, I just simply ask you guys, if free and open source software has changed your life, please, Go to the Free Software Foundation website, fsf.org, and go to membership. And this is very important because this group of individuals that's trying to get board of director membership uh, on the Free Software Foundation and change free software forever, all it takes is some of you guys, just go join the Free Software Foundation. Anybody can do it. I've been a member of the Free Software Foundation in years past. I've let my membership lax, but I may sign back up. But go to membership and then join now and then choose a comfortable membership level, you know, however much you can give, but become a member, especially a member where you are able to actually vote for upcoming elections. Because again, as people like you and me, you know, we could become members of the Free Software Foundation, people that actually care about free software and respect free software. We can keep that dream alive so that these people that want to tear it down stand no shot. And when you sign up for a membership, uh, one of the things you can do, you can tell them who referred you to the website and what inspired you to join today. Be sure to give them some words of encouragement. Let them know why they got your money. Let them know that you're giving them money and becoming a member of the Free Software Foundation because you stand with them on free software, that you stand for freedom, and you do not want to see free software destroyed from these people that are trying to infiltrate it. Take care, guys. Peace.